Hello gamers and welcome back to the tutorial campaign of Battle Brothers on the Switch. And uh, yeah, sorry for the slight delay of the episode. I wanted to put it out yesterday, but um, you know, real life stuff got in the way. But here we are. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel, watching the series, following it, and thanks for all the subscriptions as well. That's uh, pretty awesome. The channel has grown in total by like 15 subscribers now. I think m most of them, if not all, came because of the uh, Battle Brothers stuff. So that's an increase of more than 10%. Um, 10%. Um, so there's a contract we could take. Let's do it. And my aim for this episode is to... Um, is to... what happened here? My recording software. Okay, I'm still recording good. I accept the offer. Uh, hunt down what terror is shot time. I accept this contract. Uh, my aim for this episode is to show you, if possible, how to farm armor. Because that was a question in the last episode. Generally speaking, you need to kill your enemies without destroying their armor. So let's say you use a military uh, pick or a pickaxe that's very effective against armor, swords, damage armor as well. So what you need is a dagger um, or a knife at the top right, we've got one. Um, because you have this attack, puncture. Inflicts damage that ignores armor, that's really good, but it has a 15% decreased chance to hit and it costs more fatigue. Look at this, a step costs 7 fatigue and this one costs 20. Um, so you need to actually give it to brothers that are good fighters. Uh, for example, he has 63, so I'll give him this as a secondary weapon, so we can swap. It's a very light weapon, and you can see that his fatigue stayed 70. Look at this. Okay, let me do R. Still 70. If I give him this, it, it, it drains him. Um, so he stands next to this guy, so these two will try their best um, to farm armor. We have lots of guys in our roster, not all of them are good, but I think we did the ambition in the last episode. And there comes the new ambition. And we will go for the battle standard. So we need 2000 crowns, then we pay 1000 and we can actually keep 1000 crowns. And it gives us a pole arm weapon and um, ten percent of the resolve of the bannerman are given to uh, the guys surrounding him in a fortile radius. I think they should be. It's very likely that we have to fight against beasts and that's unfortunate because they're not good for earning stuff. And I think I forgot to post... Oh, it's dire wolves. That's not bad because dire wolves could be disguised raiders. It's quite the way. That's a bit annoying. Oh man, they are so fast. Look at that. Come on, get them. Night fight. But we have a numerical superiority, so it won't be too bad. Is it direwolves? It is. Okay, against direwolves, you need like slashing weapons, make them bleed, stuff like that. I will move him forward because they will attack us and we can try to kill some of them. And that means um, I could wait with him. Yes. What I'm going to do with him is wait. And then move up with him. And then we should have an increased chance to it. Currently, it's 52. Let's monitor that. And here is a sort of barrier. I think we'll move him up. Because they don't really have armor down here. Just move him here as a reserve sort of thing. Uh, we will shoot. 
presumably with aimed shot because the chances are, are going to be slim. But we hit. Good. We could unleash a dog, but we won't just yet. We'll move him here. Now he can shoot. Uh, we go for the highest chance, which should be 37%. Yes. But we fail. We move him in behind. Okay, now we move him here and try to attack. It's still only 52 for him. But we need to see the other guy. Let's try to knock, knock him out. Okay, we managed to knock it out, which means he won't be able to attack us next turn, that's good. And that's why I like these weapons against certain enemies. And now him, he will move here. And thus blocking him. And then we can get around next turn to try to frighten him. Unfortunately only as a buckler, so we can't do a shield wall, but we will do... No, we will actually attack. Because if we went for repost, let me show you that. Um, if we get attacked and they miss, um, we have a chance to counter attack with a decreased chance uh, to hit. Um, that's for every attack, I think, in the when you get attacked, but it's not super good. Um, so yeah, let's attack. <laughs> nice hit. Now this is the guy who had a 52% chance to hit. And look at this, suddenly he has 58%. And why is that? You can see a plus surround. It might be because the opponent is stunned, but I think it's because we have the surround bonus increased. Also, that's not the only thing that's indicated there. Because, um, you know, for what every guy, like starting with the second guy, you have a 5% increased chance to hit. So by moving him, this guy here, um, the chance was increased. But we miss anyway. Now he has a chance of dying. Okay. Now we need to actually two, three, and move him here. Maybe trigger something. If he dies, it doesn't really matter. He's pretty shy. He needs to make space for the spear guy. He will move in, but he won't be able to attack just for the surroundment. Now he can move here. And the, we trigger the morale check. And now the dire wolf is wavering, which means minus 10% attack and defense. Let's do the flail attack on this one, because we still have these three guys who can attack this one and might be able to finish it off. Or at least stun it, and we, this one is not injured at all. So we didn't hit. I will go for the shield wall and play it safe. Now we move this gentleman forward. And he can go for a normal attack against this one. 22% only, we failed. With him I'm also going to move forward and try to work on this one. And we hit. Good. We can still reload. Now we can attack again. We hit and it's fleeing. And also we triggered a morale check. Um, and this one failed, so this one is wavering now as well. So we can attack it again. Well, for the first time with this guy, it's now um, still wavering and we hit it. Question is what to do here. Here we have a 68% chance, here we have a 74% chance. And the reason is there's one additional guy surrounding this direwolf. We have this one and this one, so this gives us a plus 5%. And here we have 
like one, two, three guys surrounding this one. Um, now my option basically is do I go for the lower chance of success or the higher one? Also considering who's more injured, that I actually have a chance of killing this one. I'd rather go for killing this one and try to trigger morale checks. He's got a buckler shield and it's okay, he's got the shield wall. But, and he could attack this one, he's going to die if he gets hit too much. So let's hope we hit him. We hit, but only once, and we hit the head, I, thi I think. Now this one is fleeing. That means we're going to try to kill it already, because we can't move around with this one. But with this one, I now have the chance to move here. I might trigger a morale check here. We're going to get a tech of opportunities against this one anyway. So I'm going to move around. We triggered a morale check because we moved there, but it didn't help. And this guy got killed. Doesn't matter, we had some shit guys. Now he dies as well, as I fear. Um, but that's no problem. We are paying too much for them anyway. Okay, that was bad. Usually you don't want your guys to die. But they've been crap, so... Good. And now he's pretty discouraged, which is bad for his chance to hit. And he will die, actually, if we don't manage to kill this thing. But we do. Nice shot, Eric. Now this one is still in a pretty good shape. We're going to attack this one, because the other one is going to flee anyway. And again. Good. Now what I'm going to try here is the knockout. It failed. Let's try again. It succeeded. Good, he won't attack next turn. We can still try to work on this one and kill it. Trigger the morale check here as well. It's now breaking. No need to try to do, uh, stun it. I mean, we could try to prevent it from escaping, so maybe we should. There we go. Now they didn't do anything because we've stopped them. He's still in good shape. He can move here and attack. Nicely done. Now we can continue working on them. If you fight against dire wolves, and have no armor whatsoever. It's really bad. Like you've seen, they had no armor at all and they've been eaten like... like chewing gum. Now we can move through our guy. One, two. We can attack. 76%. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now... Um, Harry Bird the crawler wasn't very good, so it doesn't matter. Gerold actually survived, and he's got brain damage. Now, there's a 33% chance of your guys to survive if they get um, basically killed, and in the lock it'll say struck down instead of killed, and then they wake up with a permanent injury. In this case, um, brain damage which decreases his uh, initiative and his experience gain, but it increases his resolve, so it could be worse. And um, yeah, you can have several um, permanent uh, injuries. And obviously I did that on purpose anyway, the deaths, in order to show you that. There's also a trait called Survivor, and uh, then there's a 90% chance of, of being struck down. You can't be struck down if you're hit with a fatality move. So basically, if um, if they chop your head off, um, there's no chance of you surviving that. Uh, let's take a look at the loot. The loot ain't great. We are basically just getting our dagger back and some meat. Uh, let's leave. This was not a very good quest for us. 
Um, the problem with uh, fighting beasts is that um, that you don't, you know, get armor or weapons that you can sell or use. Okay, that's a two skull contract. That's good. We're going to take a look at it. And we can take him back. And we don't have anyone for the second line. That's something we need to ad address. Um, our brain damage guy is this... Where is he? Oh, is it him, right? Yeah, he's our red catcher. Is he any good? No, he's actually not really good. I think we need to retire him. I don't think we should keep him. He's eating, he's... I mean, he is loyal, which is good. And his attacking could... St well, it's, his attacking could still be decent. We could still use him as an early game brother. And that means not keep him for too long. He is also quite injured. Him, unfortunately, as well. We need some more armor. And I will give... He's unfortunately injured. I will give him a dagger. Oh, he's clumsy. Such a shame. Okay. We could sell some salt as well. And we could also have our guys healed here at the temple. A caravan hand could be decent, could be a decent melee fighter. Let's take a look. He's rather cheap. I won't try him out. I'll just hire him. And what we really need is a pitchfork. There's one, let's get it. Tools are rather cheap as well, let's get some tools. And now let's take a look at 200 is like the standard price. So 214 is actually decent. Now unfortunately we got pretty unlucky, but he has a very high resolve, which means he will become our, he will become our banner man. And the good thing is, and he's got melee defense, so not bad at all. Um, that we just bought the pitchfork, so he gets it. And he will also get some headgear. Here we go. Yes, that looks much better now. Unfortunately, he's still injured, but he was one of the not so good brothers anyway. Let's put the spear guy on the side. This is the temple where you can heal your guys. Hmm. Let's do it exemplary with Kurt. We can heal him for 90 or he will heal faster. Let's do it. So and he won't get infected. Now let's take a look what they have to offer. It's a caravan duty. Let's do it. It's quite a few coins. Two days to the northeast. I think we, it's likely that we get ambushed. Is there anything else we should buy? How much are they? Is the medicine? Three twenty-two. It's too expensive. All right, let's go and hope that we get attacked by raiders, but let's also ensure that everyone here can fight. Well, with him, his skill is too decreased. Let's not have him fight. He's still doing okay, and he actually had a level up. Let's take a look at his perks. I will give him Colossus because Colossus is great. It also decreases the chance of uh, being injured, which makes it so important, like I've explained in, I think, the second episode. 91 health, now we are talking. And now let's level him up. Hagen. Definitely melee attack. 
definitely melee defense. And with uh, two talent stars, you always have a fixed amount of health you get. Four is the maximum we can get without stars, so let's actually give him that. And I think health is the maximum um, four as well. Hence I went with um, fatigue. If you go for like uh, lots of armor, you want at least 80 health to 100. If you have a different type of build, it's called the nimble build. You go for nimble and then you need more health than fatigue because you wear lighter armor, but you, your health gets drained a bit more. You need at least 100 health and we could develop this guy in both directions. Now the good thing in particular if you play with a with a fog of war like like I do, um, kick, um, the advantage of caravan duty is you can heal up if you don't get attacked. It's good in this case, um, but I want to get attacked actually. Um, and you get to know the area better. There are some barbarians. If we had to fight them, that would be tough. But I think they are fleeing. So now, okay, the prestige and renown, okay. Now we can actually re recruit people for our retinue. We won't do it this time. Retinue is basically like followers. That gives you passive boosts, but we don't have enough money anyway. So look at this, we pay like 124 crowns per day, but we gain like um, 790 uh, in total for that job. So we make a profit. Crowns well deserved. And it's still night. Let's wait till dawn. It's dawn. Let's enter. There's a two skull contract. We could sell the salt here, but it would be a huge loss. This is actually not a bad price. Let's get some food. As you can see here now, tools and supplies are way more expensive. But let's buy another shield. We don't have many shields yet. It's better to get them from opponents, but I feel like um, we need some better um, equipment. And he can get the buckler. And then we have a shield guy on the left. And we will use him to surround guys. And we need to... Well, he'd need a hat, actually. We don't really have any. And he ain't good, is he? Is No. He's actually better. The brain damage guy. So let's give it to him. Now... We did, or I did misclick here and did not correctly up, uh, level him up. It's 3 plus 3 plus 4 and then plus. There we go. Now let's do one more contract. Let's talk pay. Okay, that's against thugs for sure, or maybe raiders. We need to get some stuff back. So he's got a knight, a dagger. Even though his attack skill is not the greatest, he's got a knife as a secondary and he has a high attack. Uh, I will actually start with him and the dagger. He doesn't really need the bonus. I'll have them swap. He gets the sword, he gets the dagger, and he's got a good melee skill, so he will be able to help out with the knife. Does he have a high attack rating? He has a decent attack rating, so I will make him help out with a with knife as well, if it comes to that. Because I want to show you the, the armor farming. All right. We have enough food. Let's hunt down some enemies. Northwest. 
And you should follow these direction ra directions rather closely. It's five thieves. It's, it's some raiders. This is going to be a very, very tough fight. Open fields. I don't want to fight in the forest against them. Because we have the numerical advantage, which means we need more space. And unfortunately, they have an, met someone already, and that's looking to be a, like a necromancer. It's bad. But we have a chance to farm good armor. As you can see, they are heavily armored. Shoot. And again, what's our chance? 39%. Not that great. With him, I'm going to wait for someone to come. Or oh, what's our chance down here? No, we can't get there. Okay, let's wait with him. Okay, he has no armor whatsoever. He'll just wait for now. He'll wait as well. He'll wait for sure. He'll wait as well. Now I could move forward with my dudes. If I was to do that, like attack them, I could get one attack, but then they could attack me twice. And I don't like that idea. So what I'm actually going to do is I move him down here in order to prevent them from uh, getting around and then make a shield wall. He's with him I'm going to wait because we need to see where this guy goes to. He has a two-tile range attack hook weapon, which is a polearm weapon. He could knock him out, potentially. I'm inclined to do that. I'm very much inclined to do that. I think we should try. But what we're going to do is move forward and I'll show you. Now our chance to hit is 45%. We're not going to attack now, we're going to wait. We're going to move this guy down. He is going to wait as well. And he can't be attacked from here, which is good. Now this guy, on the other hand, we he down here we go with a more defensive tactic, with a shield wall and a spear wall. He will attack as well, but the question is where? Because there are three guys down here, we actually might need him up here um, against these three. I will move him here, because he might come in handy with his um, with his um, bludgeon. Now, as for him, it's difficult to decide. I will move him here and risk it. And I will wait one turn, wait with him because he will still move and he can shoot. Now we need to focus a bit on him now. What's the chance? 53%. But we can move one tile and shoot. Okay, like it didn't do much. Unfortunately, we can still reload. Now, Mr. Spear Wall, I actually want to move him here, but he already paused before, so I'll just move him here. We end his turn. He has no armor, he, he's very frail. And now we go all in on this guy. With him, I've already paused, so we need to attack or do a shield wall. But if I did a shield wall with him and not the others, he would just attack one of the other guys. So we will attack. And we hit the head. End his turn. Now with him I'm going to move forward and try to protect the archer because this guy is expendable. We should kind of rename them. Now the problem with that move was that I can't move here and attack him. Well that's okay because I will move him uh, down here and help out with these guys. Otherwise, I, I would have exposed him a little bit too much for my liking. 
So what I will try to do first is to knock him out. <coughs> we did. So he won't attack us next turn. This is huge because a hammer can be painful. Now with him, we have a, now, now we have a 62% chance because we've moved all these people in. The only question is, we could try to go for his head and try to decapitate him. It would deal way more damage, cost the same AP. It might do more damage if the target is wounded already. So we would do 20 damage at least, but the head is damaged a bit already, let's try that. No, unfortunately we did not hit the head. Now let's do puncture. Look at this. We hit him. The armor stayed intact. Now we need to be careful. Okay, they are moving in as expected. I would, would like to shoot him, but he's a bit in the way. So let's go for him twice. Come on. Good, his armor is still intact. He could help out with that. We could move him in here only. I'll wait with him and see how it develops because he has no armor at all. I'm inclined not to use him. His armor is still pretty much intact and we need to continue fighting up here, start killing them off. Now this puncture tactic is something you want to apply after you've decided the combat in your favor. Now with him I'm going to unleash the dog. Helps with surrounding as well. And we will attack him. They didn't move in here because of the spear wall. So against human opponents like raiders you can use things like in particular the spear wall but to a certain degree the shield wall as well um, to um, you know kind of f um, force them into certain directions if they were undead they'd just move in now with him I will try to kill him we did now with him I'm just going to stay here because I won't move in I couldn't attack him we would get an increased chance to hit him, but only with uh, one guy. So what I'll do is I'll just move down here. So I've got the option to move here or, he or, or further down. Now we don't want him to die, our guy. But he is now in grave danger, unfortunately, because the hit was, the head was hit. Um, now with him. I'm going to go here and try to knock him out. We hit him, but we don't knock him out. There's only if without a, there's an additional perk that helps, but there was only like a, I think 75% chance, and unfortunately we failed. That might cost us dearly. We will try to kill this one. Okay, not looking good. Knock him out. Okay, we can't knock him out. Try again. Okay, we are missing a lot now. We couldn't do the puncture attack again against him or against him. He is more injured. And we have a higher chance because of the surroundment. Let's try again. Okay, I could have gone for um, a shield wall, but I didn't. <clears throat> now these two need to sort it out down here because we need to... Um, distract this guy as well and ideally hurt him we wouldn't hurt him with a spear much so and there's a high chance to hit and we hit but it doesn't really help okay now he brings back the dead that's bad but we had this guy in reserve he can step in well, he's almost dead dogs can be very very helpful Go for him. Now, what I'll try is to finish him off first. 
because he he's almost done for. Okay, that's bad. Yeah, he might not survive, unfortunately, Hagen. Our best character, basically. Unfortunately, he misses as well. Let's move in. Now he's supporting this guy. And we need to finish him off. Otherwise, we have a huge problem. We And we do. Now with him, I will use him as bait now. Because he's a really bad character. Um, in comparison. His stats aren't great at all. So I will use him as bait. And for the surroundment bonus if need be. <clears throat> now we can shoot. Um, but where? We'd need to move. I could move here and shoot at him. Problem is I couldn't use him for attacking. I could move here but then he could attack. So what I'll do is I'll move down here, two tiles, because if you move one tile you can only attack once anyway, and we shoot at him. Okay, now our guy is fleeing, which is also bad, because they will get attacks against him. Now he's using his repost, but we attack nevertheless, 66. We missed twice, that's unfortunate. So I can't really show the show yet how to how to use the farming. Let's try to knock this one out. He has no helmet. And we don't hit his head. Normal attack. Bad. Come on. Hagen will die as soon. As he moves, because we don't manage to knock them out. Okay, he actually managed to escape. That's good. That's so good. Look at this. We are missing a lot. And it's just unfortunate. Now we can move him in. And attack. We w won't get this armor. Because it's now gone. Now with him, not sure what to do. We could use him as bait. Let's use him as bait for him. It's quite likely that he will attack him. Yes, he does. And we miss. Now it would be good to kill this one. And we do. Now let's move forward. And the the necromancer basically revives the dead and can kind of enhance them, buff them. And we need to take him out. So we will use we could use him to take him out, but there are no dead. But he could revive this one, for example. So I think it would be a good idea. To get there but we need to stop him him as well so I'll go here first I think he's a greater threat because the undead are slow we have a chance of dealing with him with them so this armor is gone unfortunately now couldn't really show you the um, how it works okay he's now fleeing which means I will definitely attack this one And he's dead and with him we'll actually move in just try to scare him he's dead as well and this guy is super exhausted Hagen has regained some confidence but his armor is completely gone I won't use him to fight against uh, the necromancer Who is reviving the dead? 
But we have so many guys, we have a good chance of tearing, taking them down. Unfortunately, we hit the head. Where the helmet was still active, basically. Okay, now he's at least wavering. Let's hit him. Still only wavering, he knocks out our guy. He killed Kurt, the guy with the axe, but he was shy anyway. But we are losing too many men, that's a bad thing actually. Because they cost you. And now they come back and we have a problem. We need to finish this one off. Come on, one more hit. There we go. And now we have to deal with several undead, unfortunately. All with a 55% chance to hit. Let's go for him first. It's going to be his turn first as well. We still have a chance of knocking him out. Come on. Okay, that's not good. 45%. Oh, look at this. We can now actually see the tile we're aiming at. I think it was patched. Okay, he knocked us back. Um, and with him, we're going for the necromancer as well. Okay, this one is gone. We move in. Okay, we can't because of fatigue. Okay, he could escape, luckily. Okay, not good. Only one hit. Hopefully our dog survives. Now against him we have a 48% chance to hit. Here we have a 58% chance. Here we go. Unfortunately he might kill this one. Oops. He won't survive that. Now you see he's, he's been killed. And now this guy is wavering. That's very bad. He's not wavering, he's fleeing. Okay, now he's lost his head as well. Come on. 48%, the chance to hit are decreasing as we are losing our morale. We don't oh, damn it. The next one has been taken down. And now we might actually need him. Okay, he is now in a good position. Good. And he liked that. Here we go, come on. Very good. He will just stay in case he revives someone instead of attacking us. So I couldn't really show you the how to farm armor, unfortunately. Because we didn't get into the position for that. Instead of that we dealt with a tremendous foe. Five raiders and the necromancer. Kurt actually, one of the Kurds survived. Severe concussion and his permanent injury is minus 40% fatigue. Collapsed lung, he needs to go. Um, he, yeah, they went, they went too great. So now we basically only get some headgear and there are some of the equipment and obviously we get some return equipment from our weapons. And we will get some money and the chance to get some better recruits. 
But the key players, kind of as you can see, they all survived. Um, so good players like Hagen can now get uh, more decent equipment. Who is good? He can get this coif. Hmm. He's not very good, but he can get that. He's a frontline guy, so he can get something as well. All right, we need to do some level ups as well. Maybe we do them in the next episode because this episode is already quite long. Um, and we will do some equipment changes. Maybe recruit someone. Let's get to Horn. Get the crowns. Obviously we lost. Okay, wait one second. It's one thing we need to do. We need to retire him, unfortunately. Because with that party collapsed lung, there's no point in keeping him. And his skills weren't too great. With clumsy, minus five melee. He wasn't gonna last. We're not going to pay compensation right now. We don't have much money. Might be a bit demoralizing, but that's the way it is. So we get our coins. There's no one we could recruit. There's nothing cheap here but medical supplies, actually. We should buy some. We could sell one hammer, at least. And this shitty wooden stick. Yeah. And in the next episode, I hope I can show you some farming. But we will need to travel to a different settlement. We will continue east, I think. So thanks a lot for watching. Until then, bye for now.